Hey friends, we are going to discuss date range in pandas to continue our time series analysis talk. If you have not seen my last tutorial on date time index, then I would highly recommend watching that first before you continue on this. For this tutorial, I am on Google Finance and I am going to download Apple stock prices. You click on historical prices here. It allows you to specify the date range here. So you specify that date range and click on this link to download the prices in this kind of CSV. I have the prices from the month of June 2017. Now, let's say due to whatever reason, the data that you are processing doesn't have this date column. Okay, so your CSV file looks like this. So you can see that this just compare these two files. This has date. This doesn't have dates. Okay, and not having date is pretty bad because to process time series information, you need those dates. Okay. So date range function will allow you to generate these dates. Now, one thing you would notice is it's not straight one to 30 as a sequence. You have things like weekends. So for example, third and fourth June were weekends. So you see that missing here and date range will allow you to handle all of this. Okay. So as usual, I have launched my Jupyter notebook here by running Jupyter notebook command and created this uh, new notebook and I am importing that CSV file into my data frame. So let me execute this to see my, how my data frame looks. Okay. So my data frame right now looks pretty boring because it has only open, high, low, close, etc. It doesn't have dates and it has this integer index and I want to generate dates and insert into these data frame. In order to do that, you have to call pandas date range function. Now date range function takes couple of argument. The first argument is start. So the start date of uh, your range. So my start date here is uh, 1st June 2017. And my end date is 30th June. So 630 2017. And then the third argument is your frequency. Okay. So frequency I'm going to supply as B because B means business days, which will exclude the weekends. Okay. And when I execute this, you can see that I have first, second and third and fourth is missing. I straight have fifth. So if you notice the calendar here, you will see third and fourth were weekends and it successfully excluded it. So awesome. Wonderful. I have all these dates now. Now all I need to do is set these dates as an index in my data frame. Okay. Now, how do I do that? So if you remember, uh, data frame has a function called set index where you can specify your index and you can just say in place equal to true. Remember, this argument is important. If you don't say in place is equal to true, then it will not modify this original data frame. Instead, it will return a new data frame. All right. So when I run this, now my data frame looks much better. It has date uh, as an index. All right. Now, just to recap the benefits of date time index with date time index, you can do amazing things. For example, you want to plot a chart of let's say closing stock price. Okay. You can easily do that by first specifying the matplotlib inline logic, the line magic logic. Okay. And then saying df dot close dot plot okay when you do that it will specify nice plot with dates so here you have dates and here you have prices now if you didn't have this then the chart will put only index here versus here it is putting the dates all right now you can do 
partial uh, date selection and you can specify your dates for example I'm interested in first 10 days of uh, closing stock prices okay so you can specify your date range like this and it will return you a uh, partial data frame also how about getting an average of closing price in first 10 days you can do that as well so you can see you can do amazing things with uh, this date time index okay now let's say due to whatever reason you want your data frame to have prices on weekends also so you can see that you are missing the weekend prices now on weekends really uh, stocks did not trade so you don't have the price but you can assume that whatever was the price on friday was the price on saturday and sunday you can uh, do this thing using pandas as frequency method so i'm going to insert a new cell in my uh, notebook here and call df dot s frequency function so s frequency will allow you to regenerate your data frame according to that new frequency so my new frequency i want is days okay so days include the weekends and the method that you want to use to carry over the prices is padding all right so let's execute it and see what happens all right so when i do as frequency days what happened right here is previously my data frame were missing the prices on third and fourth because third and fourth as you know were the weekend so you can see third and four were the weekend so now I generated uh, these prices here uh, using padding method and what padding will do is it will just carry forward the dates on third the sorry the prices on third to fourth and fifth so you can see the prices are same here you can pretty much uh, generate frequency to anything you can say okay I want weekly all right so weekly will show you only weekly prices you can also do hourly and it will show you hourly prices this is pretty amazing stuff actually whenever you have holes in your data and you want to have you want to carry over data from a previous date or previous hour you can always use as frequency now to figure out the list of available frequencies you can always go to pandas documentation so if i go to pandas documentation here and type in date range uh, it will show me the link where i can have all, all the available frequency so here i will just use days and business days and hourly frequency but you can specify like secondly frequency or year and whatever is your business use case okay now back to our date range function you notice that here i gave start date and end date and frequency now let's say i only know about start date and i don't know about end date but i know how many periods i want to generate like how many date time index uh, elements i want to have in my range uh, you can do this by doing all right so i created a new cell here and my new range is let's say this so pandas date range my start date is let's say first january 2017 okay and I don't know about my end date, but I have number of periods. So you can say my periods is equal to let's say 72. Okay. And then specify your frequency. When I execute this, uh, I get 72 days starting from 1st January. 
okay and these days are business days so they exclude weekends so for example first january was weekend so i excluded that okay you can pretty much generate any frequency so you can say hourly frequency give me 72 periods okay now this could be useful when you are generating uh, taste data so let's say you are writing some unit test or integration test and you want to generate some fake data all right for that it could be useful and i'll show you how so what you can do is you can generate some random numbers so i'm going to import numpy and call numpy's random dot rand int so this function allows you to generate random numbers okay now i can specify my range here so let's say i want to generate random numbers between 1 and 10 okay and how many numbers i want to generate well i want to generate let's say uh, whatever is the length of my range when you do that it gives you basically 72 uh, 72 uh, numbers okay random numbers between 1 and 10 okay now I can generate panda series out of this okay so I can say my time series is pandas series okay which has these numbers and my index is equal to range okay and when i print this time series you will see that i have random numbers between 1 to 10 for all these dates or frequency you see that i have hourly frequency this is pretty useful if you are generating some sample you know some random samples to conduct your unit test or integration test or for any other reason all right cool now one thing that date range will not handle is uh, holidays uh, specific to any calendar for example we had like 4th of july as a holiday in us because it is an independence day so that's something that b frequency will not handle b will only handle weekends uh, and for that we will have to use holiday calendar and that is uh, its own topic so we are going to cover that in future tutorial uh, i have uh, this uh, jupyter notebook in a video description below so i would recommend that you download it you play with it uh remember uh, learning coding is like s learning swimming if you see someone swim then you are not going to learn how to swim you have to jump in the pool and get yourself wet similarly for coding whenever i am uh, teaching on this tutorials uh, please download uh, these uh, code in advance and then try to play with it as uh, you are following me uh, on these videos all right so that is uh, one great tip i can give you all right so thank you very much for watching and we'll continue our time series analysis in uh, next tutorial